Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you very much for inviting me, uh, Postos. Uh, it's lovely to be here. Um, the temperature is gorgeous. The sun is shining. Uh, when I left Britain yesterday, it was raining and it was cold, which probably won't surprise you, and it didn't surprise me, but it's really nice to be here when none of that's true. The only snag is I can't bring my family. Um, but there we are, a small, small problem just for me. Okay, what I'm going to be talking about is the drop in Somali-based pirate uh, attacks over the last three months, and whether it is the case that we should be thinking, again, about the nature of the Somali pirate threat, and what you as ship owners and operators and part of the maritime community might therefore want to do in response. I'll just give you a little summary of why it is that I'm here. Um, you probably aren't aware of the company that I work for. We're called Aegis. Um, we're a sort of security and uh, analytical uh, risk analysis company. Uh, a particular reason for our focus on Somali-based piracy is that we're maritime intelligence consultants, and as a result of that work, since 2005, we've been the advisors to the Joint War Committee at Lloyd's, um, which makes us quite unpopular from time to time. Um, the Joint War Committee is the body within the London uh, insurance market that makes recommendations as to which areas of the world are so dodgy that special additional war premiums should be paid for calling at those ports or sailing through those waters. Because of that work, we've been monitoring the Somali pirate threat since 2002. So whereas a lot of people who are looking at this have only come to it in the last three, four years, we've seen it all the way from 2002. My work on Somalia actually started in 1995. I did my first field trip to Somalia in 1996 when it was quite interesting. Um, uh, it's probably even more interesting now, but I'm married and have children and the wife won't let me go. Um, so we've been monitoring the Somali pirate threat since 2002. We've operated in Somalia, and since 2008, we've been advising a range of governments on the effects of counter-piracy policy. And finally, uh, we do a range of risk analysis products. We've been advising, uh, working with the commercial maritime sector, again, since 2002. One product that some of you may use is the AVRA Automated Voyage Risk Assessment System that we do with BIMCO um, and Hudson, an American marine management company. So we've been doing a range of products. We've been looking at this pretty hard for over a decade now. Okay. The drop in Somali-based pirate attacks. If you look at July, August, and September of this year, 2012, and you compare those months to the previous six months, you will see there has been a very substantial drop in pirate activity. The attacks, by the way, what we categorize as an attack Broadly speaking, there are four subcategories. There is what we call a suspicious approach, where skiffs usually approach a commercial vessel in a manner that suggests they have piratical intent. There is a vessel fired upon, that's where the people making the suspicious approach open fire on the target vessel. Mm -hmm. The third subcategory is boarding and robbery. So if the pirates actually manage to get on board the vessel. And the fourth category is hijack. So all four of those subcategories over the last three months of this year, July, August, and September, we've seen a substantial drop compared to the earlier months in the year. Why has this happened? Why have we had this drop in attacks? First reason, and this is the one that probably many of you will, will have advanced if asked about it, weather. The summer monsoon makes it much harder for the pirate skiffs to operate. Um, when you're sitting out there in the middle of the Indian Ocean and you're in a, a small skiff with an outboard motor, uh, wave heights of six feet or more are going to be difficult for you. So, the summer monsoon makes it much harder for the pirates to operate, and this therefore means that we always have a significant drop over that monsoon period, every year in pirate incidents. 
they tend to run for each of those months, so the summer monsoon months, each of those months, incidents tend to run at somewhere around 20%, sometimes 15% of the incidents, of the incident levels in the high intensity months of the year. So can I go back? Yeah, so if we go back, and if we look at this year, you will see that the high intensity months, we've got March and February, and to a lesser extent April, 24, 17, 13. Uh, if you look back over previous years, again, those tend to be the high incident months, and you will see, if you look down to the end, to the monsoon period, July, August, September roughly, you'll see, broadly speaking, 15 to 20% uh, of the incidents uh, in the monsoon months. Okay, so weather accounts for some of the drop. Secondly, navies, the activity of navies. Naval patrols have significantly assisted in the reduction of pirate capabilities, and a particular help uh, actually has been interdicting uh, pirate attack groups uh, as they're leaving Somalia. Um, it's worth pointing out, though, that, that uh, the political will to continue this may well erode over the months ahead. Uh, obviously, navies have the same resource constraints that everybody else has. And the fewer incidents there are, the less of a political imperative there is to maintain that expensive naval presence. Another reason for the account, another reason for the drop in attacks is privately contracted armed security personnel, armed guards. Um, what this has done is it's led to a significant fall in the number of vessels that get shot at. In terms of overall incidents, fewer vessels get shot at. The pirates don't open fire once they see armed guards going through their escalation of force drills. When the guards make it clear they have weapons, uh, where, then pirates tend to pull away. What it also has led to is a proportion of su suspicious approaches, that's the pirates, approaching the vessel but not acting yet, that's remained relatively high because the pirates will approach to see if the vessel is protected, and if it is protected, then they pull away. I would argue, however, that perhaps the biggest reason for the drop in attacks is that it is harder for the pirates to find targets. Now, there's a lot of guff that's written and said about Somali-based pirates. There's lots of stuff that says they have spies in ports, they are able to uh, access AIS, they track vessels depending on their, the value of their cargo. All of that is nonsense. Somali-based pirates are opportunistic. They go where they think the ships will be and they seize the vessel they can seize. There is no single recorded incident of a vessel being seized and the pirates knowing before they seized it what its cargo was. Not one incident. There is no single incident of a vessel being seized that had been targeted beforehand. So they're opportunistic. They go to a shipping lane and they wait for a likely victim. But what has changed over the last couple of years is that shipping lanes are either disappearing. Now, I'm going to take you back a couple of years. One of the things that we found as a company when we were advising the Joint War Committee at Lloyd's, one of the things we discovered was that over 2006 and 2007, as the, the area that was excluded increased, in, in, uh, as the pirates kept on extending their activities, the excluded area would get larger and larger. First it was 100 miles, uh, basically 100 miles off the Somali coast, then 200, then 250. In each case, what we discovered was that when you had that excluded area, you built up a shipping lane just outside the excluded area, which the pirates sat in. The pirates go to the shipping lanes, and if what has happened since the middle of last year, the excluded area has moved all the way up to the Indian littoral, to Indian territorial waters, what that has done is, firstly, it's meant that those shipping lanes that were around the edge of the 
uh, excluded area. They've gone, and they've been replaced by other shipping lanes that either in the Gulf of Aden or off the Indian littoral are protected by shore-based surveillance and by competent naval forces. So shipping lanes are either disappearing or protected. What this means is that pirate activity has largely been displaced to the Indian Ocean and Gulf of Oman, where fewer vessels pass a given point in a given period of time. So this means that the pirate action groups have far fewer opportunities to attack in a given operational cruise. If they're going to the Gulf of Aden, 60, 80 vessels perhaps going through the Gulf of Aden any, en, during any day. If you're sitting out in the middle of the Indian Ocean, you're lucky if you will see one or two vessels in a week. So there are far fewer opportunities for the pirates. And this is particularly interesting now, given that it is much harder for the pirates to use commercial vessels, as they did last year, as their motherships. So their range and endurance has been reduced. There's one big question mark, however, over any explanation of the drop in attacks. Experience of the last 10 years shows that the most important dimension to Somali pirate behavior happens onshore and out of our sight. It may well be that the drop we've had over the last three months is a function of the pirates being affected by different things that we do not know and cannot see, or by concentrating their efforts in certain ways that we do not yet understand. So it may well be that the drop is a function of what is happening on shore, and therefore we don't know what will follow afterwards. But we've had this drop in attacks, but Firstly, caution must be used when you were discussing this massive drop in piracy. The last year, the increase in both attacks and hijacks, particularly in the first quarter of last year, it was so dramatic that it skewed the figures. It skewed the figures for that year, and it skewed the figures for this year. People keep on referring to last year as if last year was the year that matters. But if you look at this table, you will see that last year is the anomaly. If you look at March of this year, 2012, 17 incidents. 2010, 48. 2009, 36. 24, 9, 12. It's January of 2011, that 47, and then the 65 in March of 2011 that skews things. So if you look at the total, 59 attacks in 2012, first quarter of 2012. That's in line with the figures in 2010 and 2009. It is important to note, when we're talking about this massive drop in piracy, it is important to note that we are still at incident levels for the year as a whole that are higher than the 2008 spike in activity that caused Lloyds to list the Gulf of Aden. So people who talk about perhaps the drop in attacks, meaning that the uh, war risk insurers will reduce the areas that are excluded, I can't speak for them, but speaking as someone who advises them, I would say, best case scenario, right now, we where we were in 2008 when we suggested you list this area. So how have things improved? Previous years, Previous years have also seen a lull in activity followed by a significant spike. We'll see if that happens this time around. A worrying little statistic is that so far this year, 37% of all confirmed attacks have resulted in hijack. That's compared to 11% in the same period last year. Now, that 11% was actually materially assisted by the success of citadels. Actually, 25% of attacks saw vessels being seized, but then the crews were in the citadels, the pirates couldn't retain control of the vessel and the crew, and so they departed. But, so we've got 37% of all confirmed attacks being hijacked now, 11% last year, and this is the highest rate since 2008. 
As I mentioned, the naval presence is almost certainly going to diminish over the next year. Ransoms remain high. The average 2012 payout is 4,000 that we can work out, sorry, is roughly $4,291,000. That compares to $4,794,000 in 2011. Worryingly, we know that in the most significant ransom negotiations that have been going on to date for a vessel seized this year, the initial demand was $75 million. Now, you and I know that's pie in the sky. The pirates are never ever gonna get 75 million. But what it means is that the ransom negotiating process becomes more problematic and the end point is probably much higher. So that's another concern. Finally, the average time held, the average time that vessels that have been ransomed and released, the average time they have been held, that continues to increase. 2012, 211 days. 2011, 142 days. Some of you may be thinking, wait a moment, there are a couple of vessels that have been held for two years, Iceberg 2 in particular, and that distorts the figures. We've taken those out. This is just the vessels that have been ransomed and released, and those figures are going up. Okay, the bit you probably want to hear about, after all of the stuff I've been talking about, what are the implications of all of this for you? Firstly, don't be complacent. You're probably not inclined to be, but just in case, don't be complacent. We've had lulls in activity before. The incidents may be down, but the chances of an incident turning into a hijack are greater now than ever, which means there is a premium on any kind of protection that you spend your money on. Ransom demands are up, so probably the cost of a vessel being held are, are increasing. And if any of you are thinking the downturn over the last three months makes me wonder, do we actually need to spend the money on the armed teams or on unarmed teams or on uh, hardening the vessel or on the expensive citadel? If any of you are thinking along those lines, I would recommend that you not. But if you are, I would strongly suggest you wait until April of next year. Why? Because, ooh, I've just wrecked things for myself. Uh, that's me, by the way. Um, sorry, could you, could you save me? I'm trying to get back to my, uh, um, my uh, table. Uh, and... To go back is that, yes, victory over technology. If you go back to this table and you look across the board, 2012, 2011, 2010, and 2009, it's February, March, April that are the high incident months. So wait until the end of April before you make any company level decisions about the measures that you should adopt. Only then will we know whether what we've faced in the last three months is a lull or something much, much more uh, significant. And finally, this is the most basic measure. Before I go to that, actually, I will say one thing as a health warning on what I've just, just said about security measures, not dropping them. Probably a couple of you are thinking, wait, he works for a security company. He would say that, wouldn't he? I, I should say that my company does not provide armed teams. Uh, so uh, while I should, in theory, say, yes, armed teams are the way forward. You need more of them, lots of them, ideally formed by Brits from a company called Aegis. We don't actually do them. So at least in that, you may be suspicious about everything that I say, but at least on that, bear in mind, I'm not advocating something from which my company will profit. Um, okay, that's the health warning. The most significant thing that I think each of you can do as ship owners and operators is independent routing. As you will gather from my presentation, we strongly believe that pirate activity is driven by the availability of targets. 
If they can find targets and the targets are easy to take, then the pirates have a very healthy business. If they can't find the targets and the targets that they do find are difficult, then their life becomes difficult. So for you, once you're out of the IRTC or any other busy waterway that is protected, steer an independent course with occasional deviations. And given that perhaps 60%, I would argue actually probably it's about 70 to 75% of the commercial vessels in the Indian Ocean do not carry armed guards, and given that the pirates are opportunistic, unprotected shipping lanes are the pirates' greatest friends. When you are thinking about doing your routing, think, is this what everybody else would do? And if it is what everybody else would do, shove in where budgets allow that little bit of deviation that means that you are not creating a shipping lane on which a pirate can sit and steal your vessel.